electricians and electrical engineers use circuit diagrams to simplify the arrangement of components and circuits that they may be working with or designing. Circuit diagrams show how to connect the components. The components are the different parts that are used to make a circuit and each different type of component is represented by a different symbol. Circuit diagrams and symbols make it a lot easier to draw and understand electric circuits. An electrician in South Africa using these symbols can draw a diagram that an electrician anywhere else in the world could easily understand. All sciences use symbols that can be understood internationally because it is important for scientists to be able to share their work with their colleagues. Hi there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to lesson 3. In today's lesson we will use circuit diagrams to build the electric circuits. We will also take readings of potential difference and current at various positions in the circuit. By the end of this lesson you should be able to construct and interpret circuit diagrams and measure current and potential difference in a series circuit. When we construct an electrical circuit, we always follow a design plan called a circuit diagram. Symbols are used to denote the components and lines to denote the connectors. Now it is always important to be able to draw and identify these components. So let's have a look and see what they are. These symbols are for the cell, a light bulb, a resistor, a variable resistor, an open switch, a closed switch, an ammeter, and a voltmeter. Components can be placed in a circuit in two ways, either in series or in parallel. Now in a series circuit, each component is placed one after each other to form a continuous straight line, while in a parallel circuit, each component is placed alongside each other or parallel to each other. Components connected in series form a continuous loop from the positive terminal of the battery all the way around to the negative terminal of the battery. So one component is followed by the next. This is our series circuit. Now components connected in parallel have two or more branches in the circuit. These two resistors are connected in parallel with each other. The parallel resistors are connected in series with the battery of cells and the switch. We will be focusing on parallel circuits in later lessons. But for now, let's look at a simple circuit that you all know, namely this electric torch. How many of you have ever taken an electric torch apart to see how it works? Well, here is a diagram to show you how the parts inside the torch are arranged. Right, here's my torch and I'll take it apart for you. I'll just unscrew the lamp portion. There's the lamp portion in the front. The two cells, which I'll place over here. And there's my casing. Now, let's look at the diagram more clearly and I'll move these out the way. Do you see that the battery consists simply of two torch cells connected in series with the positive terminal of the cell connected to the negative terminal of the second cell. The battery is then connected to a switch, which is then connected to the light bulb. A different way of describing the torch is by using a circuit diagram, and the parts of the torch are represented by symbols. Here is my circuit diagram of the torch. Firstly, I've got my two cells in series, and I'll place them over there for you. I've got my switch, which is that switch over here, which I'm moving with my fingers. And here is my torch lamp. The lines in the diagram represent the metal conductors, which connect the whole system together. Using the circuit, I want to measure the current passing into the light bulb and the current passing out of the light bulb. I also want to measure the potential difference across the light bulb. Therefore, I will connect my ammeter firstly in this position and then secondly in this position over here. And here is my voltmeter which is connected across the light bulb. I have now connected my circuit board to take my first current reading. Here are my two cells in series. There's my ammeter, 
my light bulb, and my switch. I'm now ready to take the first reading. So let me close the switch, and let's see what the ammeter reads. Can you see that my ammeter reading is approximately 0.21 amperes? Now let's write that reading down. I1, my first ammeter reading, is 0.21 amperes. I've now set up my circuit board to take my second ammeter reading. Let me close the switch. And can we see that my ammeter is reading 0,21 amperes? Let's now write down that second reading. I2 is reading 0,21 amperes. I'm now going to take my reading of potential difference across the light bulb. I've connected a voltmeter in parallel into my circuit. Let me close the switch and we'll take a reading. And can we see now that the voltmeter is reading 2,91 volts. Let's now write that reading down. So in my final column for the voltage, 2,91 volts. Now what did you notice about the reading on the ammeter in the two different positions? Well, if we look carefully, we can see that I1 and I2 are both reading 0,21 amperes. This means that the current is the same throughout the circuit. Now let's try another investigation. What I've done here is replace the light bulb with two resistors. I'm then going to take my first ammeter reading in this position, my second ammeter reading in this position over here, and then each potential difference reading by placing a voltmeter across R1 and then a voltmeter across R2. Right, let's take our first ammeter reading. I will close the switch. Do you notice that the needle is pointing to 0,11 amperes? Let's now write that down on our table. Here's our table. I1, my first ammeter reading, 0,11. 1, 1 amperes. Let's now take our second ammeter reading. I'll close the switch. And can you see that the ammeter is reading 0, 1, 1 amperes? Let's now write that reading in the table. So I2, my second ammeter reading, is 0, 1, 1 amperes. I'm now ready to take my first voltmeter reading. I'll close the switch. And it stabilizes, and I'll use the bottom scale. My reading is 1,75 volts. Let's put that voltmeter reading down into our table. V1, 1,75 volts. Now we take our second voltmeter reading, closing the switch, and let the voltmeter stabilize again on the bottom scale. And we can see that the voltmeter is reading 2,65 volts. So let's put that into our table. V2 is going to read 2,65 volts. Now let's go back to the table and look at our results more carefully. Well, if we have a look at our results, you will notice that the values for I1 and I2 are both exactly the same. 0,11 amperes and 0,11 amperes. Now why is that so? I think you'll remember that we said earlier that current will remain constant in all parts of the electric circuit. However, let's look at the voltmeter readings more carefully. V1 and V2, V1 is 1,75 volts and V2 is 2,65 volts. These readings are not the same. Now, why is that so? To answer that question, I'm now going to connect another voltmeter, which I will label V3, across both resistors. I've now connected the voltmeter across the two resistors. Let's take our reading. Notice that we're now moving onto the top scale, and our needle is reading 4,4 volts. Now, how does this reading of 4,4 volts compare to our two previous readings? Well, if we go back to the paper, 
and I write in 4,4 volts next to V3, notice that if we take V1's reading of 1,75 and V2's reading of 2,65 volts, that if you add the two together, we will notice that they add up to 4,4 volts. In the series, each resistor receives a share of the total amount of energy transferred per coulomb. Resistor 1 receives 1,75 joules per coulomb, and resistor 2 receives 2,65 joules per coulomb. So if we take the readings of V1 and V2 and add them together, you will notice that we get our result of 4,4 volts. In other words, this reading of V3 represents the total potential difference in that circuit. So therefore, potential difference is divided in a series circuit. The next question that has to be asked is why does resistor 2 receive more joules per coulomb than resistor 1? Well, the answer is simple. Resistor 2 has got a higher resistance than resistor 1. The manufacturer's label on resistor 2 tells us that it has a resistance of 15 ohms, whereas resistor 1 has a resistance of 10 ohms. So the larger resistor receives a greater amount of energy transferred per coulomb of charge that passes through it. In other words, it receives a greater share of the potential difference. Now let's summarize what we have learned today. The current in a series circuit remains constant. The potential difference can be divided in a series circuit. In series, each resistor receives a share of the total amount of energy transferred per coulomb. And the larger resistor receives the greater amount of energy per coulomb of charge passing through it. It receives a greater share of the potential difference. Thanks very much for joining me. In our next lesson, we will look more closely at the parallel circuits. Until then, goodbye for now. Yeah.